Hey everyone, and welcome to Get Your Hopes Up. I'm Chrissy Wright, and I'm so glad you're here. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is the God of hope, and He wants you to overflow with hope. So let's start our week by getting our hopes up again. Now today, we're talking about how to see and hear God more. This is a common question I'm asked from you all, how to hear from God, how to find God, how to discern God's voice, how to know if something is from the Lord or not. This is a top question I'm asked, and I love talking about it. I'll tell you, this is something I have grown in tremendously over the last couple years. But before we get into the tactical, let me start with an example, because y'all know I love to do this. Now, I know that many of you listen with kids in the car, so they will actually appreciate this example. Every single Christmas, the coolest thing happens. Okay, so we will unpack our Christmas decorations. We get them down from the attic. We start unpacking everything and we start to put things away. We don't even have to have the house completely decorated, but every single year since we've had kids for 10 years now, on that night, an elf comes to our house. And y'all, we wake up the next day, even with partial decorations, And there is a tiny elf hiding in our house. Now, our kids have named our elf Chippy. And Chippy will be hiding in some spot somewhere in our house. And our kids run around the house to try to find him. Well, this is the beginning of the Christmas season with Chippy. Because Chippy is going to be in a new spot every single morning when my kids wake up, run downstairs, and they go to find him. Now, here is what is crazy, y'all. No matter where Chippy hides, they find him. It doesn't matter if Chippy is hiding in a window or hanging from the curtains or hiding in a cereal box or getting into some kind of mischief and making a mess. It doesn't matter what room he's in or how high or how low or how hidden. It doesn't matter. Every single morning, my kids find him. They find him every single time. Some of the times I can't even find him and they find him. And here's why. They're looking for him. They're looking for him. During the Christmas season, when Chippy is at our house every single night, they know that he's here and they look for him. They look for him relentlessly, persistently, passionately. They run down the stairs and they start tearing the house apart to try to find Chippy. It's not just a game. It is their number one priority every single morning. They find him every single time. Why? Because they're looking for him. They're looking for him. And the same is true for you, y'all. You will always find what you're looking for. You will always find what you're looking for. So if you're looking for God and his activity in your life, you will find him. But if you're looking for ways to be discouraged, down, you'll find that too. Either way, you will always find what you're looking for. 1 Peter 5.8 says this, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Think about these words right now. Doubt, discouragement, death, hopelessness, hurt, hate. These are tools of Satan himself and he will use them. They are here. They are available for the taking if you're looking for them. If you're looking for ways to be discouraged, if you're looking for ways to take the bait of the enemy, which is doubt, disbelief, discouragement, the tools in his tool belt that he uses to put a wedge between you and God and tear down your faith. If you are looking for those things, friend, you will find them. You will find them. But if you're looking for God and for hope and love, joy and faith and encouragement and happiness, you'll find that too, because you will always find what you're looking for. So here's the great news. You want to see God more? Look for him more. The more you look for God, the more you will find him, literally. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart, not half-heartedly, with all your heart. Deuteronomy 4.29 says, but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. 
First Chronicles 16, 11 says, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Mark 12, 30 and 31 says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So if you want to find God, you need to look for him. But here's the catch. You have to recognize it's him. You have to recognize that it's him. You have to give credit that it's him. How many times in the Bible did people stand face to face with Jesus and not even realize it? The disciples in the boat, when Jesus came walking to them on the water, they thought it was a ghost, y'all. What about Mary after the tomb when she was heartbroken and she was talking to Jesus and asked him where her Lord was? Or the men on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24, 32, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Y'all, you can be face to face with God and not even realize it. You know what's interesting about all of those examples? None of them were looking for Jesus. None of them. And if you're not looking for him, you not only might not find him, you may totally miss him when he's right in front of you. You know, in episode 211 of Get Your Hopes Up, I share several crazy stories of signs and God moments that I have experienced. And they're wild, y'all. They're, they're crazy. They're weird. Maybe they made some of you uncomfortable. I'll tell you, those stories were actually edited out when I first shared them last year. And then when I took my podcast back, I re-recorded them and put them back in. Because I'm hard-headed, yes, but also because I really believe they're powerful. They tell a testimony of not only what God can do, but even who God is, his heart, his character, the way that he moves, the way that he acts, the way that he speaks the way that he leads. And I think that's really important to share because it might open your mind to how he's moving and leading and speaking and guiding in your life. If we don't know what to look for, then we can't find him. And the reality is God will do some things that make people uncomfortable, even good Christians uncomfortable, even you uncomfortable. He will do things that you don't expect and he will work in ways that you do not understand. You know, for example, one of the ways that God has shown himself to me really powerfully over the last two years is through signs. So a lot of different things to me have become signs because of how God has used them in my life in powerful ways. So here are just a few examples, okay? Cardinals, hawks, deer, the number 15, the number 25, a house and not just a literal house, but even the imagery of a house and the analogy of building a house and even FedEx. I have multiple stories about each of these signs and how God has spoken to me through them, but I just want to share one of them. Okay. So last year when God was telling me we were going to move, I felt him also tell me at that time to start packing. And as crazy as it sounded, I know what I heard him say and I wanted to obey. Well, that very day, I was driving to my son's school to pick him up. And just before I got to school, on the right side of the road, at the end of a driveway, was this giant pile of boxes left there to go to the trash. And y'all, as I'm driving by, I felt my heart jump and I felt the Lord say, go back and load up the boxes. So you know what? I did. I turned around. I pulled in the driveway with two of my three kids and my dog, and I loaded up all of those boxes. They were all FedEx boxes. So I took those FedEx boxes home. I had my house assistant help me begin packing those FedEx boxes. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Christy, you never moved. Okay, right. Sure. Yes, I do know that. No one is more aware of that fact than me. Trust me. I don't know what that was, y'all. I don't know if it was a test or training or what. I don't know. I don't care. All that I know is that God said to pack and I obeyed. That's my job. Understanding why he asked me to do something or why something doesn't play out the way that I expect is not my job. This is a faith walk, not a logic walk. Keep in mind that Jesus was going to save the world and everyone at that time thought he was going to be a military leader and they were devastated when he died. And so we have a real track record of, you know, not understanding the why of what God says. So anyway, FedEx has become this thing between me and God because of the FedEx boxes. Because God told me to pack and then provided the very thing I needed to do the thing he was asking me to do. So now, every time I see a FedEx truck go by, I smile. I remember that moment between God and me when he gave me 
boxes when he provided for the thing he was asking me to do. By the way, do you know how many FedEx trucks are on the road on any given day? A lot, y'all. A lot. So here's the pushback. Here's the devil's advocate. Here's the criticism of this story. Every FedEx truck isn't a sign, Christy. Every cardinal's not a sign. Every number isn't a sign. It's just a bunch of trucks on the road. You over-spiritualize everything. Okay. Okay. Let's just sit here for a moment, shall we? I have one question for you. I have one question for anyone that is thinking those very thoughts, that every FedEx truck is not a sign. Every cardinal is not a sign. Every hawk is not God leading, speaking, meeting me where I am. Here's my one question. Is there anything that God is not in? Is there anything that God is not in? Is there? Is there anything he's not in? Is there a place he doesn't go? Is there a single thing that he doesn't have complete authority and dominion over? Is there any good thing that did not already come from him? Is there a world and things and numbers and animals and trucks that have their existence apart from him? Do we take a single breath on our own? Psalm 24, 1 and 2 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. I believe it is absolutely impossible to over-spiritualize anything. The spiritual world is bigger and more dominant and more powerful than anything we can see or touch or feel or experience here on this earth. My God is big and I am small. Heaven is big and earth is small. How arrogant of us to ever think that we have or do or see or create anything apart from God that spoke the universe into existence. How ridiculous. So I see God in FedEx trucks all of them, every single one. And the more that I look for my God, guess what? The more that I find him, you will always find what you're looking for. So if you're looking for only what you can see and only what you can understand and logic and comprehend and prove scientifically, or only what you can understand the why of, or only what makes sense to you, your world will be very small. Your understanding of God will be very small. He exists outside of time and space and way outside of our understanding of him, as we have seen from the beginning of time. If you want to see God more, guess what? All you have to do is start looking for him more because you always find what you're looking for. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me for Get Your Hopes Up. I love hanging out with you every Monday to help you get to know God, get closer to Him, and get your hopes up again. Be sure to share this episode on social media and tag me at Christy B. Wright on Instagram so other people can get their hopes up as well. And then follow the Christy Wright podcast channel so you never miss a new show. And I'll see you next Monday for another new episode of Get Your Hopes Up.